So it's finally here. The big one. One of the big ones, rather. This was the game that is supposed to put the PlayStation 3 to the test. With its outstanding hardware and possible capabilities, we've seen exclusive titles like Uncharted and Ratchet and Clank Future that can show off what the PlayStation 3 could do. The big one before this be Metal Gear Solid 4, which blew away most gamers who owned the system. However, Killzone is an obscure franchise which had an average shot on the PS2, though it's underrated and pretty decent in my opinion. The popular opinion stands that this is a below average shooter, which is a shame because the, that game had so much potential that the developers themselves didn't fully realize. That and the hardware was quite limited. However, they eventually did. A sequel was in the works. There was a portable game called Killzone Liberation, which basically ties in the plot between both games and came before Killzone 2, and it's one of the most impressive PSP titles at the time, and still is a very fun game to play. Eventually, trailers of Killzone 2 were released, which got everyone curious and blew a lot of the audience away with claims that the footage recorded was done in the game. But after the shortcomings of the first kill zone, also came a lot of skeptical people, and with a lot of talk that the footage was pre-rendered. Regardless, after four years of development, the game is finally released on February 2009. Now, the intro itself should be the indication of how epic this game will appear to be. Right off the bat, let's discuss the graphics. Now, keep in mind that everything you see in this footage, right down to the intro, is done in real time. None of the cutscenes in this game is pre-rendered. Right from the sky to the ground, and even the sunlight in the destructible environments, the graphics look amazing for the hardware given, and it really does feel immersive, as if you really are on the Helgen planet. The environment displays itself in different ways, and unlike other well-known shooters, it barely repeats itself. Every new act you get into, you're at a different part of the planet, and each is rather impressive in my opinion, though the exception would have to be the water effects. The character models are also very detailed. When you watch the intro, the first face that greets you is Scholar Vizari, and just looking at him, the attention to detail was very high. Like, holy shit, look at him. The other character models in this game are pretty damn good. The weapons are also well designed and look realistic, though pretty much all of them are fictional, but whatever. The sound aspect of this game is just as amazing, with orchestra soundtracks that really intensify the situation you are in the game, and are played out at the right moments, all the way from the battle intermissions to the battles itself. The voice acting is also top-notch, with great dialogue, each to give off something the player may notice, with the characters like emotions, feelings, etc. Now you might be wondering, why am I paying so close attention to all this detail? It's a game review! Get to the gameplay! It's because the developers were aiming for the cinematic feel of this game, sort of like what Infinity Ward with Call of Duty 4 wanted to aim for, which did its job quite well, but I digress. The point I'm trying to make is I wanted to give you an idea on how immersive this game is, which takes us down to the single player plot. The plot takes off right after Killzone Liberation, though you don't have to play the other Killzone games to get the plot here. In my opinion, the plot is pretty good. There's intensity and sometimes the emotions, drama, and politics, but most of all the mindless violence. Then again, ain't all violence mindless? It's about the ISA invading the Helgen planet because the Helga stole some ISA warheads, so the ISA arranged the ship Red Sun, with a fleet commanded by Colonel Templar, the protagonist of the previous Killzone games, is in charge of leading the fleet to invade the Helgen planet. An Alpha Squad is charged with the capture of Azari, with the player taking control as Sev. Throughout the game is gunfight after gunfight and attempts to not appear generic, which I personally think it did a good job at. Now here's the moment you've been waiting for. The gameplay. The gameplay itself is quite impressive. It doesn't feel generic. In fact, when you first play it, it'll have a heavy feel to it, as if it's realistic. It's what the first game tried to accomplish, but didn't do a good job at. But let me tell you, from the movement down to the firing the gun, this game is the prime example of how to incorporate realism in the game, and at the same time not to take away the important factor of games. Fun. You got your typical gameplay mechanics that work with many other FPSs like throwing grenades, which you can see how well done they are. Sprinting, which makes the battlefield seem intense, 
aiming your gun, which feels natural, jumping, which also feels natural, and having one of two pistols as backup, as opposed to as holding two big guns at once. One thing I really like about this game is the cover system. The viewpoint doesn't change at all when you cover. You're literally covering behind a wall and have a limited perception instead of seeing everything that happens. That in the game requires some strategy instead of running gun. And trust me, going Rambo is not the option in this game. Doing this will be the equivalent of sticking your hand in a full cooked grease pot. It's gonna hurt you bad, well, the pride at least. The AI is one of the most impressive looking to date, as all of their movements look natural, and they do put up one hell of a challenge against you, though they do got their hiccups here and there, mainly the partner AI. Who can surprisingly hold out on their own, especially compared to other FPSs where they barely try, but all seem to have a nasty little fetish of fragments of lead entering into their bloodstreams. Funny, no? There were also boss fights in this game, three I can recall, and except for the second fight, they are very challenging, but the final battle just deals the cake along with every other war zone you are in. The best way I can describe the intensity of the fights in this game is by a saturation of a montage. Overall, the single player itself is a very immersive and entertaining experience, which even seasoned FPS players will admit that it is one of the best games ever experienced. At least, I think so. Now about the multiplayer. 